Trade disputes can be resolved through diplomacy, debate, or an army. What's up, meta nerds? Today we're going to be taking a tour of the Multi Troop Transport, otherwise known as the MTT. We'll explore the role it played for both the Trade Federation and the CIS, delve into its cross section, and even that time, the MTT seemingly took flight. Designed and manufactured by Bactroid Armor Workshops, the MTT was used at first by the Nymoidian led Trade Federation. There is very little to no information about their deployment before the famous Battle of Naboo, and so before we talk history, let's take an in-depth look at the specifications of this behemoth. The multi-troop transport is quite a humble name for such a monster of a machine. With a length of 35.6 meters, or approximately 117 feet long, it was longer than 19 steamrolled Gungans, but still considerably shorter than the Republic's A6 Juggernaut. And at 10.54 meters, or almost 35 feet tall, the MTT was a Yoda higher than two Fambas. Cargo-wise, it's estimated that the MTT could haul 12 tons. That's enough to haul 112 OOM battle droids, including their blasters, and still have enough energy to add three and a half dobacks. If one of these beasts showed up here on Earth, it would be as long as 14 smart cars, taller than four M1 Abrams tanks, and would have enough hauling power to transport 879 bars of gold. At a sluggish 35 kilometers per hour, or only 22 miles per hour, the MTT isn't going to be winning any pod races. The speed makes it very vulnerable to attacks, which is why we always see it escorted with AATs, STAPs, and battle droids, or holding back towards the rear of the battlefront. To have an Earth comparison just so you know how truly sluggish this thing is, the record for the fastest human sprint is 28 miles per hour. But then again, Usain Bolt wasn't carrying 12 tons of nasally death. Roger, roger. The MTT was only armed with two twin blaster cannons, mounted on a rotatable ball turret on the front of the vehicle. While extremely powerful and accurate, having even been said to shoot down starfighters, the placement of these guns made the transport dangerously vulnerable from any angle besides the front. And while we're on the subject, that front of the MTT is heavily armored, and not just to protect its portable pop-up army. It could also use its rounded face as a battering ram knocking its way through walls and trees, like we saw it doing as the Trade Federation droid army was clearing a path through the dense Naboo forest. Maybe Ventress should have brought a few of these to Ragosa. There's even more going on inside of the MTT, which we can see thanks to one incredible cross-section. Starting up at the top, we see that the MTT is piloted by a battle droid, while another serves as the gunner, something similar to what we see in the AAT. These vehicles were usually on pre-programmed paths set up by the droid control ship, but the pilot could deviate from these orders when necessary. Since the model we're looking at is the original, as we move down we can get a closer look at this vehicle's most infamous feature, the droid Rax. Factoid Armor Workshop, who also made the B1s, really took advantage of designing this thing with droids in mind, as I can't really see any other army being able to take advantage of this system. The droids were folded into the fetal position, loaded up into four smaller racks, and stowed away safely until duty called. The base model of MTT could carry up to 112 standard OOM battle droids, and we'll discuss the variants in just a sec. We can see here that the rack is also operated by two OOM battle droids, an overseer, and an operator. The entire forward interior, as expected, is dominated by the MTT's main feature. And so the other essentials of this transport were housed in the back. We can see the power generating cooling systems, not to mention the many vents and fins that would make sure the MTT doesn't overheat. Interestingly, the main power generators are said to be provided by Kua Drive Yards, who became known throughout the galaxy for their Republic warships. I guess when both sides are secretly run by the Sith, it doesn't really matter where the credits come from. But if you want some more information on that, we actually covered this in an old video, explaining how Kuat Drive Yards would have ended up in the CIS, but how Palpatine's machinations made them a vehement supporter of the Republic. Now that we've covered the original, let's quickly run down the variations. As war broke out, the methodical deployment of battle droids became increasingly obsolete. To counter this, some MTTs were outfitted with new racks to drop B1 battle droids onto the field already standing upright. While this did fix the issue with the speed of deployment, it did limit how many droids could be brought to the battlefront. This design seemed to be considered an improvement, as we see MTTs throughout the Clone Wars being used to quickly drop off super battle droids, of which it could only carry 12 at a time. We see them doing just that during the Battle of Dathomir, littering this red jungle world with dozens of clankers. This version, as well as others used by the CIS, were given a paint job to better match the blue and gray look of the Confederacy. Another time to see the MTT variant was during Watt Tambor's occupation of Ryloth, where this sleazy Skakoan used two of these transports to haul treasure back to his palace. While we never see the full interior of these models, it could be assumed that the droid racks were removed, giving Tambor even more cargo space for his riches. New model or not, we do get to see a new feature of the MTT, 
the cargo hatch, where Mace Windu, alongside Razor and Stack, were hiding. We see that it has more than enough room for the cargo, and maybe Tambor would have gotten away with it if he put a couple droidicas in there as well. As we see, the cross-section also says how it was great for transporting destroyer droids. The history of the MTT is pretty straightforward, having almost nothing before its appearance on the plains of Naboo. The Trade Federation deployed at least 12, which combined could deploy 1,452 droids. Flanked by AATs and STAPs, the MTTs stayed out of the line of fire as the army that they brought to bear had seemingly won the day. That was until a certain Chosen One interfered, shutting down the entire droid army. After their debut, we see the MTTs being used throughout the Clone Wars as previously mentioned. But Bactoid also continued to innovate new transports for the CIS. These included the MUT and Trade Federation Troop Transport. Think Flying MTT. But ultimately, the multi-troop transport remained the go-to vehicle for most of the war. Other notable times that we see the MTT in use was during the Battle of Kashyyyk, and even the Battle of Coruscant. When unable to use the MTT to deploy troops, the CIS often made use of the HMP droid gunship, to quickly fly in clankers alongside a devastating barrage of suppressive fire, like we saw in Scipio. The influence of the MTT's design was also seen in one of the deadliest creations ever brought out by Bactoid, the Super Tank. Like all things Confederacy, the MTT saw the end of its glory days when Darth Vader ended the Clone Wars on Mustafar. While it has been said that the MTT did see later action in the Galactic Civil War, it did not play a notable role in any key battles. Well, that about wraps it up for the MTT, but you definitely want to stick around for these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. It was originally designed to look like a train, but the final look for the MTT took a cue from nature thanks to Doug Chang with its tall facade and chin guns made to resemble an African elephant's skull and tusks. And while not much changed regarding the MTT and its switch from Legends to Canon, it did receive a bit of meddling. It went from 31 meters long in Legends to 35.6 in Canon. Strangely though, it shrunk in height, going from 13 meters tall to just 10.54 meters. Cross-section comes from Star Wars Complete Cross-Sections, and additional information comes from Star Wars Encyclopedia of Starfighters and Other Vehicles, and Ultimate Star Wars. But with that, let's close the hollow book on the multi-troop transport. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon or PayPal. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon. But most important of all, remember, with the MTT, an entire army is just a carry-on. And the Force will be with you. Always.